Hey guys, this tutorial is on how to combine two handheld clips using After Effects. So, for an example here, with this tutorial, I'm going to use some footage that I shot for the short, The Ambush, that I created a few weeks ago with uh, the Film Shorts crew. And so here's the finished clip right here. As you can see, it looks like there's one shot, both of us, but of both of Nathan. But what it is, it's two shots basically, but both of them are, were handheld shots, so you couldn't just go into After Effects and mash them together because they'd move all over the place and it would look ridiculous, wouldn't look right. So I'll sh I'm basically going to show you how to, how I, what I had to do to complete this shot. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my raw files that were shot at 720p at 60 frames per second in Travis's 550D. And the two shots are just here. I'm going to drop them into After Effects. Just let my drive spin up there. And I'm going to drop it in, create a composition, drop them both in. right here. And so basically I'm going to crop them to make them line up. Okay, so what we need to do is to crop these. So what I'm going to go is I'm going to go about where I want the pictures, about where I want Nathan, where the clip should start. So I reckon about there, when he's just pulling up his gun and I'm going to crop all that video and move it down to the front the start of the clip. So now I'm going to line both of them up get them in, in sync with timing. So I'm going to set the opacity to the top layer around 50% and I'm going to go up to where, I'm, where Nathan shoots which is about here, yeah Boom. And now I'm just going to move this clip into position so that they are in sync with him getting shot. There we go. Now if I move it, it's not going to be perfect with the timing since this is just a tutorial as an example. So it's not like this shot is going to go into the finished product. So We've got him being shot by himself, by a clone of himself, probably. And so basically, you can pretty much see the movement from the two cameras right there, how they move away from each other and all around. So basically what I'm going to have to do is stabilize both clips in the same position, in, around the same position, which will be near the center, preferably where you're going to mask um, your two images together because then you won't get as much slipping where, where the mask cuts into the other clip. Okay, so now I'm going to select the top clip. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to crop this clip, crop the project to where I want it to end. So just as he falls down, I reckon, around there. So I'm going to crop that back down there. Don't want to do excessive motion tracking. All right. So now we're going to click Stabilize Motion over here. And we're going to tick Rotation as well, because it's a handheld shot, so there's going to be some rotation. And I'm going to choose two points. I think I will choose this point, perhaps. Just make sure his hand doesn't go over it when it comes down. Oh, that's all right. OK. So I'm going to choose that point, that corner and I accidentally grabbed it the wrong way. All right, and I'm going to choose this corner here. I'm going to make... Okay, so once that's been tracked, as you can see, if I scrub through, they stay on the points pretty well. His hand almost stuffs the track up, but that's good. All right, so now we're going to click Apply under the Tracker menu and click OK on the options. And so now 
when we go when it's back to the composition, if we set the opacity back up for it, as you can see, it's stable around that point, so everything else will move around it. So we've basically cut out the actual camera movement. That's a pretty nice track there, I would think. Alright, so now we're going to have to track the other clip. So we're going to go stabilize motion again, tick rotation, and try to use the same points that you used on the first clip, because this will just make the merging of the two clips much a much nicer. Okay, now that's tracked, as you can see, they're tracking pretty well on the same points as the other one. So now I want to apply the motion again. And now basically both of them are stabilized. So now we want to actually line the, their positions up. So what I want to do is set the opacity to the top layer down to about 50% again. And as you can see, they're, they're off a bit, like quite a bit. So if you look here, the anchor point's fully keyframed, so we don't want to change that. So we'll change the position, which isn't. So we'll just move it into position. It's quite easy. Try and get the area where you've tracked it in line. Doesn't matter about the background since we're only going to have half and half of each image. And it won't be opaque. Alright, so. I reckon that's a really good one. Let's see, cause, because that's why you want to have them on the. Okay. So basically, click on the top layer and go right click, mask, then new mask. So then you get this yellow kind of thing if you don't know what, how to mask. And basically, I'm just going to move this around the center line. I reckon around that position. A bit in, maybe, along that. All right. But now I also want to move that away because if I go and look at it, there's quite a sharp line and you can actually see the inconsistencies like that. You can see the difference in movement like really well. And also his gun goes through it. So what I want to do is edit this mask, hold down Alt and Control, and basically move that in a bit just to accommodate Thing, and I reckon this like that. I reckon, yep, that accommodates the whole thing. Alright, but it's still a bit sharp, so what we're going to do is go into the, the mask, under masks and mask one, or whatever number mask if you've got multiple masks. I reckon about 20 pixels, a 20 pixel feather will be alright. And as you can see, it's quite a nice difference if I scrub through. As you can see, his gun looks pretty good all the way along. So that's that's all good. So we've now stabilized it and combined it. Now we're going to need to get rid of all these black bars. Alright, so the reason we're getting these black bars is because of the stabilized footage. Because the two handheld shots are moving at different ways. And of course, the After Effects camera is just pointing straight, not moving at all. So to fix this, and add some handheld movement to the finished shot, we're going to have to make the, both layers 3D. Now, this, this checkbox with the little 3D cube, if you put your mouse over it, it says 3D layer. So we want to enable that for both layers, and then go to Layer, New, Camera. So we're going to go OK on all those settings, right here. So, what we get is this kind of pinkish layer, I guess. And make sure you're at the start of the line, the timeline, not later, where there's no black bars yet. And we're going to parent this to, let's say, the bottom layer movement. What that does is it gives the camera the actual camera movement from that clip. So, if we scrub through, as you can see, now we have no black bars, but we do have 
um, handheld camera movement, so it looks way more realistic. But we we got this problem of him being cut off now. So what we want to do is go in, under camera settings, camera options, zoom. We'll zoom in a bit. I reckon, and we'll also change the position a bit to about there. If I scrub through, as you can see, it's pretty much done. So that's basically how you, like, you can do some more cleaning up on the top. That's basically how you combine two handheld shots. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.